I've seen many tutorials around the web that use Python's random module to generate passwords, but this is a bad idea and should never be done. If you have a look at Python's official documentation on the random module, it says that pseudo-random generators of this module should not be used for security purposes. And this is because the random module generates pseudo-random numbers that are completely deterministic. This means that under the same initial conditions, this generator will produce exactly the same output sequence every single time it's executed. And of course, this is bad if you want completely unique passwords that aren't shared by anybody else and cannot be generated by a potential hacker. So in this video, I'll show you how to create a truly random password generator using the secrets module in Python. And we're going to use Tekinta to make it more user friendly. Let me first demonstrate an insecure way of generating random passwords. This is a simple program that generates three pseudo-random passwords with a length of eight characters. The random seed on line seven is used to initialize the pseudo-random number generator. And the seed essentially dictates what sequence of numbers the generator will create. By keeping the seed value the same, you can ensure you get the same sequence of numbers every single time you ask Python for a random range of numbers. Line eight is using the string module to create us a string of lowercase alphabetical characters. And these letters will be the pool of characters we'll use to generate our passwords. Our getRandomString function uses the random choice method. Each time this method is executed, it will pseudo-randomly select a letter from the alphabet. And the for loop ensures this is done up to eight times, specified by the length variable. And finally, the join method appends each randomly chosen letter to the result string variable every time the for loop completes a cycle. Once the for loop is complete, we have eight randomly chosen letters representing our password, all different to one another and seemingly random. So you might wonder what the problem is. There are three different passwords, each having a different collection of letters. But these passwords are not actually independent from one another. They belong to the same pseudo-random sequence, which is controlled by the seed on line seven. So instead of calling the password function three times to generate these passwords, why not generate a single 24 character password and see what we get? As you can see, the 24 character password is simply made up of the three previous generated passwords, except now, they're joined together. Also, if we run this script again, you'll see exactly the same random passwords displayed and will be the same every single time. But we can mitigate this somewhat by using the system clock as the seed. If I remove random seed from the code, Python will default to using the system clock as the seed for our random numbers. The system clock is a simple counter that continuously updates from an absolute starting point. So the seed will continuously be changing, but this doesn't remove the fact that the algorithm used to generate this so-called randomness is completely deterministic. It is still possible to duplicate these password strings if you know what the initial seed was when they were generated. In other words, these passwords can be guessed. So instead of using a deterministic algorithm to generate our passwords, we can tap into a computer's hardware to access a source of electrical noise that will be the source of our randomness. And this is where the secrets module comes in. If we go to the Python documentation, you can see that the secrets module is suitable for passwords and should be used in preference to the random module. They've also helped us with some examples on how we can generate alphanumerical passwords at the bottom of the page. And we're going to borrow this code for our application. You will need Python 3.6 or above for the script to work. So our new code is very similar to the previous password generator, but there are a few additions that ensure the password generated is as varied as possible. First of all, Instead of importing the random module, we've imported secrets. We've also added some punctuation and digits to our alphabet variable, just to add some more complexity to our final password. The purpose of the while loop 
is to continue generating new passwords until a certain complexity is reached, which is dictated by the conditions in the if statement. So the if statement will allow the program to break out of the loop only if at least one or more characters in the generated password contains a lowercase letter and at least one or more characters is an uppercase letter and there are at least three numbers in the final password. If none of these factors are met, the program will generate a new random password and the cycle will continue. Also, the random choice has been replaced with secrets choice, which works in exactly the same way, but now uses our system hardware to generate truly random choices within the alphabet string. And due to the secrets module, these choices can no longer be predicted by anyone. Running this script shows us that the while loop will cycle through a few generated passwords before all three conditions are met. And as you can see here, the first few passwords do not contain at least three numbers, and only the last password satisfies all three conditions. And this code will be the core of our password generator app. Now the next step is to simply create a graphical user interface to make this code more user friendly. And we're gonna use Tekinter to do this. We'll start by creating a blank window with Tekinta. After importing the Tekinta libraries, we instantiate the TK class and assign it to the variable main win. The title command allows me to change the text in the title bar and I've also initialized the size of the window to be 600 pixels wide by 500 pixels high. Next, I've created a frame widget which will act as a container for everything else in the app and I've used the Geometry Manager pack to ensure this frame sits neatly in the center of the main window. All of this is simply to keep everything centered if you decide to resize the main window. Within this new frame, I've added a label widget which will form the title of the app. And to display this label within the frame, I've used the Grid Geometry Manager. Grid allows us more control over where graphical user interface elements are placed within the window. So for example, if you want two labels side by side, you would place them on the same row, and so on. But there are more arguments you can use to best control the layout of the elements. Column Span tells the layout manager that I want this widget to occupy more than one column, in my case across two columns. The sticky parameter dictates where, within the grid, each label will sit. N means aligned to the top center part of the cell, or the north direction. E means aligned to the right, or east, and so on. Using all four letters will make our label aligned to the center of the grid cell. Lastly, the paddy parameter will place some padding around the label in the Y direction. On the row below, I've added two elements side by side. A label widget asking the user to choose a password length and a slider that has a range of 8 to 32. Now, of course, you can change this to whatever you want, but even a password of eight characters might be on the low end, and you'd probably want your password to be longer than this. Computerfile has some really good videos about how to choose a password and how passwords can be cracked, and they will give you a good idea as to why longer and longer passwords might be necessary as computer hardware improves. But getting back to the code, I've also added a main loop method. This tells Python to run the Tekinter event loop, which listens out for things like button clicks and key presses. In the next step, we create a button that will run a function called genPass whenever it is clicked, and you can control what function gets called within the command argument in the button parameters. So in this case, I've created a function called genPass, which fetches a value on our scale slider. I've also copied our while loop from the beginning of this program into this function. We can now pass our chosen password length into our while loop, and a truly random password of our chosen length will be printed out into the shell. But we can also print out our password into an entry widget. 
This entry widget has a parameter called show. This controls whether the text entered into this field is displayed as plain text or as a collection of stars. I've also added two more commands to our genpass function. The delete method will remove any text in our new password entry field from index 0 to the end of the string. This ensures that a brand new password is added to the entry field every time we hit the generate new password button. And the Takinta insert method simply inserts our generated password at index 0 in the entry field. In the final part of the code, I've created a new function called copy to clipboard, which clears the operating system's clipboard, collects the text within the new password entry field, and saves it to the clipboard. And this function executes when the copy pass button is clicked. And that's all there is to it. This is a rather simple password generator that can be extended, but it contains pretty much all you need to generate secure passwords. I've got the code on my GitHub page, which you can download and improve upon. And if you have any comments, please write them in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.